All right, let's hop into it with Article 1. We're going to be talking about AI detecting hate speech. So this is coming out of Stanford University's uh, Institute for Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence. And we have Mitchell Gordon, a PhD candidate, leading this effort with Michael Bernstein, the associate professor, and Tansonori Hashimoto, I hope I didn't butcher their name, an associate professor helping along the way with Caitlin Zhu, a PhD candidate helping as well, and then an Apple researcher giving an industry perspective on all of this, um, and that person is Kayor Patel. Sounds all like right. an all-star cast between these like high-powered Stanford researchers and this person from Apple. It, it makes sense, though. Like AI, and you alluded to it in the beginning, like AI and hate speech, that in most most likely impacts our lives at social media. So let's dive mm -hmm. into like what it does and what the research is. And and, and I'm I'm gonna add a quick note. I love these things where industry comes together with academia to investigate something. Yeah, me too. So, so let's start off. Let's just talk about hate speech and AI and how AI has been used to crack down on hate speech and toxicity as a whole. So quick big number to think about. In the last three months of 2020. Facebook's AI took down 27 million posts, 97% um, of which people hadn't even interacted with, like their actual human moderators hadn't even interacted with. Yeah, wow, that's a lot of posts. Huge number. So that's if an you're wondering, number. AI has definitely affected your newsfeed on Facebook and probably other social media as well. Exactly. So now let's talk about why this is important. Um, researchers are saying that the AI they're using to actually detect hate speech, toxicity, misinformation, has a 95% accuracy. And these Stanford researchers are actually saying that's not necessarily the case. Here's why. They're talking about how what might be, what, what a traditional AI model would be good at doing, the example that they used was saying, um, if someone says Java in the context of a sentence, are they talking about coffee or are they talking about the programming language Java? So that's a very objective truth to analyze, right? It's cut and dry. Your definition cut of and it dry. can only go one way or the other. Exactly. But then you bring like hate speech and what is toxic and what is not. And that is more subjective. It, it differs from person to person, doesn't it? And that's the point that we're trying to make is that because this is different, that 95% accuracy might not actually be accurate. So they dug into this. They, um, they actually referenced a couple of studies, which I thought were, was really cool. One of the studies they talked about was they, they had a group of people come in and they showed them a set of tweets from Twitter and they asked them to identify which ones had hateful um, words in it. 5% of all the tweets that they saw, people identified as having some sort of hateful language. But here's the interesting part. Out of everyone that was there, out of that 5%, only 1.3% did everybody agree on, agree on being actually hateful. So people weren't able to reach a consensus on the rest of them. Only a small, small minority of the tweets were actually identified as being hateful by everybody there. So... This leads into this research that the actual Stanford team did, where they got a bunch of people, they sat them down, and they studied the pattern of what they genuinely believe to be a toxic uh, behavior or a toxic language or a toxic post. And um, the, the way they study them is that they want to get rid of the fluff. Like, let's say sometime they were given a prompt and people didn't completely understand it, so they made the wrong decision. They wanted to see the pattern in how people ta th thought. So... Using that pattern, they established these primary labels, which I think of as like a baseline for how you or I might think about a certain subject. Okay. And they used that baseline and applied it to the data that was used to train this artificial intelligence that did the policing that reportedly had a 95% accuracy. Doing so resulted in a significant decline in how this artificial intelligence model was able to detect misinformation, toxicity, and uh, general hate speech. To give you some idea, it's, uh, an idea of what this looked like, the uh, confidence went down from 95% to 73% whenever it came to toxicity. It went down to 62% for misinformation, and it went down to 79% for pornography, which you would think is pretty cut and dry, yeah. but I guess... I think of the no three, one. that might be the easiest for AI to distinguish between what's not pornography and what is, but I guess even that, the confidence dropped down from 95% to around 80 
And that's the interesting part. Once you start factoring in what people perceive something as, especially in these, in these like weird gray areas, AI might not be the best way to go about it. And, and it leaves us in this weird spot now, right? So if we reach the point where the more you put in people's ideas about how things should be, what is right, what is wrong, how can we police our social media? And I, I want to read this quote um, fr from uh, Mitchell Gordon. He said, the question is, what can you do to make people less unhappy? Given that you will have to make some people unhappy, is there a better way to think about whom you are making unhappy? And that leads to the question of, well, if what we care about is policing, for example, Twitter, mm -hmm. can we take the general consensus of what Twitter deems to be toxic or not toxic and build an AI around that that polices Twitter. That could be an approach, right? But you'll but definitely that, get a different definition if you do Twitter versus Facebook versus Instagram versus Parler. You're going to get... Parler, there you go, yes. A lot of different definitions based on the uh, population that you're using to define that set of what's toxic versus not toxic, right? Exactly. And <clears throat> you, you can create this echo chamber, which is not great either. Um, what I love about this is that this is, this is such a great research like being inquisitive about algorithms that are governing what we see on a pretty much daily basis like most of people's interactions now are on social media yeah so that's what i was going to say is i've seen a lot of posts from influencers recently actually concerned about a change in instagram's algorithm it actually takes me right to that quote that you had from mitchell gordon about who are you making unhappy or happy when you use these algorithms they're talking about how Instagram is rolling out a change to their algorithm where they hope to reduce the amount of content you see that makes you unhappy. Well, some of the content creators that I follow that are fishermen or like that are butchers or like to cut meat or something like that, they're afraid that their content might be wrongly misclassified as something that's gory or will make someone unhappy and their content will get suppressed using the algorithm. So this is an, you know, very pertinent application of what we're talking about here where these AI algorithms govern what we see and don't see for these content creators. That's their lifeline. Like that's how they make their money is when people see their content and how we define what's good and what's bad, it, you know, and train AI algorithm algorithms around that may like completely change our experience on social media. And definitely for these content creators that rely on these algorithms to get their content out in front of people. And you know what, I'm going to add on to that. Um, Social media has been the medium for people to actually communicate what they're going through in governments and states that are suppressing people's speech. So I'm Iranian. I, I'm big on following people on social media that are it's, it's like physically in Iran. They can report on what's happening. There's water shortages right now. They're able to communicate that news with the outer world so that the world can see what's happening to them. That's not a pleasant sight to see. That definitely makes me sad. But by hiding that content from my feed... You're hiding that reach. You're making their cries go unheard. And so now, now you have this moral issue that ties into it as well. Yeah, well, and, and basically, I think the way to sum this up is we talk a lot about these research that, you know, there's a very cut and dry problem and the research defines the solution for us. In this case, I think it's the reverse. We thought we had a solution, which is using AI to police social media. What these researchers from Stanford are saying so tactfully is like, maybe what we've determined is we've discovered a problem, not a solution. And we don't really know how to solve that problem. But the problem is, we think it's 95% effective. But when you take into account all the different nuances of how a different population thinks or what you might want on your feed versus what I want on my feed, we can actually say it's not nearly as accurate as we thought. And maybe we need to go back to the drawing board. It's ambiguous, right? That, that's, that's where we're really at right now. And this kind of reminds me of that topic we talked about, uh, bias in artificial intelligence that we're using AI to do uh, resume screenings at, 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 I think, Amazon. And because of the way it was programmed and because of the words that it was looking for, the data was biased. It was heavily favoring men over uh, women. So now you have AI, again, touching these, these very crucial aspects of our lives, and we need to have some sort of oversight. We need to have some sort of, I, I don't know, I think I'm going to start going on a tangent. But the moral of the story is, like you said, um, it's good to be cognizant of these algorithms that are determining so much of our lives. And, and what, unintended what unintended consequences it might have. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah.